Hey everybody, it's Zach KK Zach's Reviews. We are back again with another video, and guys, this will be the uh, my Spider-Man No Way Home spoiler review. Guys, we have a lot to talk about um, in this you know spoiler review. So if you haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, exit the video. Go check out Spider-Man No Way Home, of course, if you haven't seen it already. But I'm I'm assuming everybody's seeing it. So me saying go see it is kind of like dumb but like because everybody is seeing this movie um, because it's so big and it's so hyped up and i'm gonna be on um, guys this movie literally lives up to the hype and has every right to be hyped up um this movie gave me everything I wanted and more. Um, literally, this movie was two hours and 28 minutes. You, um, the first thing we're going to be talking about is that you cannot feel the runtime in this movie. This movie is so good. I've seen this movie three times already. Uh, I saw opening night in Dolby. Um, I went to the three o'clock showing and I went to the, and then I literally left from that theater mind blown. Didn't know what to say. Didn't know what to think. It was everything I wanted more, and then from from then on out, I met up with my friends at Eaton Park, my, my friend Troy and his sister, we went to Eaton Park, we ate something, and then I went back in, Got, and then I literally didn't get out and probably until like 11, like, so I was mind blown, I couldn't stop freaking out, the movie literally gave me everything I wanted and more, and then I saw it again at 4 o'clock on Friday, so guy, and like, that's why my voice kind of sounds like this, because my voice literally is like recovering from me, like shrieking in the theater, um, I had a great theater experience, um, I dressed up in my Spider-Man No Way Home costume, uh, the black and gold suit, um, I dressed up in that, um, you know, as, as you guys know, if you guys that, that have been here a part of this channel, you guys know that I've been working on my Spider-Man No Way Home suit for quite some time now. I worked on it last Thursday and Friday, uh, leading, you know, forced to steal CityCon. It's a thing that, you know, that's in Pittsburgh, and I had to get it ready for that. I also made some more modifications to make it more accurate to the movie, and I had to get it ready b before this week hit. Um, you know, this week was crazy with me trying to get, like, you know, with me not being on YouTube, um, you know, like me staying off of YouTube, me staying off of Instagram, and pretty much Snapchat, Twitch, all social medias, Discord, me trying not to get spoiled because I literally wanted to go dark because every, like, you know, everybody got to see it, like, a lot of people got to see it early on Monday, um, you know, that's when it started, you know, doing its premieres and stuff, you know, and it really hit theater, they hit worldwide on Thursday, um, so I really wanted to stay off the internet, make sure I didn't get any, any, anything spoiled, or even anything more spoiled from what, you know, the two pictures that we got previously in the months leading up to No Way Home, which actually those photos were real, so I'm really upset at John Campia because those photos were actually real, and you shouldn't have released them even if they weren't real, and it kind of bums me out because it didn't take anything away from the scenes and the way I felt, but it, it's like once I saw the environment, I knew it just annoyed me that they were real, but it just, I'm really happy though, that our, that a lot of our speculations were right, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, of our speculations that were right, and we're going to be all over the place, because this movie, again, was two hours and 28 minutes, so we have a lot to talk about, but my favorite part, or one of my favorite parts, like the, the big thing I really wanted to see, um, was Matt Murdock, which we got Matt Murdock, and I, I kid you not, guys, I literally was shrieking, my sister was like, oh my god, Zach, you should, should. the whole, the, my whole theater was so responsive, like, it's like, it, it, it made me feel like I was in Endgame again, like, it was so loud when Matt Murdock, you know, always, all we saw was, you know, him just, you know, uh, you know, just slamming his, uh, you know, his cane on the ground, his walking stick, and I kid you not, the theater was loud, it was a concert, it was crazy, I was flipping out, I literally was tearing up saying, Bethany, it's happening, I can't believe this, you know, with, you know, the confirmation we got previously with, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio literally being in Hawkeye, you know what I mean, so that, that made me even happier that we that we don't have to speculate anymore it's true matt murdoch is officially in the mcu and you know it's like we saw you know kevin say that you know daredevil is officially in the mcu but it was nice to actually see it for ourselves because he said we won't we don't know when we'll see daredevil he never said we don't know when we'll see matt murdoch and that kind of was like a like a confirmation to me that oh my god it must be true that he's in no way home so when i saw him i was flipping out saying i don't need to speculate anymore i don't need to say here he said she said i don't need to see like i was right you know we were all right matt murdoch was in there i mean i put it together like because kevin was smart about this when he said we don't know when daredevil will show up not matt murdoch i was like matt murdoch is definitely gonna be in no way home especially with what's going on in hawkeye and in, you know hawkeye being around the same time as no way home it's definitely gonna happen and it happened guys i flipped out when he was talking to peter parker i never thought i would see that 
I never thought we would get the get a we would get Charlie Cox, get Vincent D'Onofrio, and hopefully all the other characters from the Netflix Daredevil in the MCU. But it's finally happening. That moment when he's talking about you know to talking to you know Peter, saying you know I got you out of this. You know what I mean? I'm you know, I'm happy to help. You know. Um, but you need to be put in front of a juror, and they need to decide if you're guilty or not. And he tells Happy, oh, I would give a good lawyer if I was you. And he's like, wait, I, I thought I wasn't being under investigation. I thought Peter was being under investigation. And that was a cool moment. And you know what I mean, like, it, just, it was so cool to just to see Charlie Cox be put back in this role. And it feels like he's never left. Literally, the man is so good at playing Matt Murdock. It literally feels like he never left. It feels like he's been Matt Murdock all this time. It feels like we haven't taken a break, taken a break from Matt Murdock. It's honestly, this, this is just how good Charlie is in this role. And the moment that I really love the most is when he's like, you know, you know, he's talking, saying you're going to need a good lawyer, this, this, and I go, you're going to be put, you, Peter, you need to be put in front of a jury and all that stuff and you have to see if you're guilty or not, but you should be okay, you know, because you have a good lawyer, this, this, and that. And he catches a brick that gets thrown through the window and I kid you not, I was flipping out. I said, Bethany, because I've been telling my sister, Bethany, you don't even know. You think what they did in Netflix Daredevil was good with Matt Murdock? They are going to make him so so accurate even like even even like more accurate more agile more you know fast more more cool fighter fight sequences like by like it's it's gonna be crazier than what we've been getting in netflix's daredevil which again is, i'm not downplaying it but like once you go and get into the mcu it's a different level of execution and and since he's in the mcu now with you know disney money marvel money he's gonna be crazy he's gonna be crazy i cannot wait and we got a taste, we get tastes of what the ground levelness is going to be in Hawkeye. Could you imagine what they're going to be doing with if when you know Matt Murdock or well, I think it's it's rumored that Daredevil is going to be showing up in the Echo series. And I'm so excited because there's rumors that he's going to be getting his yellow suit from the comic books. I'm going to be, that's interesting. I'm not the biggest fan of that because I don't know how that's going to look. But if anybody's going to pull it off, it's the MCU with the yellow suit. So I'm okay with it. I hope it's good. I think it's going to be great. MCUs don't, MCU doesn't fail when it comes to suit making. Um, they've, they've really, you know, they, they, they did struggle a little bit with, you know, the, you know, the Avengers one cap suit, but that was a, that was the only time they've messed up on a costume, and I'm super excited to see what this yellow suit's going to look like if that is true. And I'm super excited to see where Matt Murdock's going to go because there's a lot of storytelling they could be doing going forward. But, but like you know, with you know Matt Murdock and, and Peter Parker, because you know as what the events that happened in this movie, everybody ends up forgetting who Peter Parker is, and that's pretty much how things go down. And that makes me wonder because no one's going to know who Peter Parker is. Peter Parker knows who, you know, had an idea of well, how did you catch that? Because my favorite thing is when he catches it, he's like, how would you just do that? He's like, I'm a really good lawyer. I was like, that's so great. Oh my God. So he knows that something's up with Matt Murdock, but Matt Murdock won't know he met Peter Parker. So that's going to be interesting to see if we do anything with that because, it, it, you know, and one of the you know, comic book lines is, you know, you know, Kingpin's involved and Peter, and then, you know, you know, Matt Murdock gets involved in Daredevil and then Peter, it's like, and then Peter gets involved in Spider-Man and everything and all that stuff goes down. It's in the comic books. Also, there's, you know, in, on the, on, on the old, um, you know, you know, cartoon Spider-Man series, they did an episode where it was Matt Murdock and Daredevil and Spider-Man and Peter and Kingpin and, I'm thinking we could be getting that maybe later down the line. That would be very cool to see Daredevil and Spider-Man, you know, go like meet face to face and and work together. That'd be cool. Um, so hopefully we get that later down the line. That'd be freaking phenomenal. Um, I also think we're gonna be doing some stuff with Kingpin and Spider-Man. I feel like that's where we're, where we're heading with you know um, the next uh, you know three uh, trilogy movies with you know Tom Holland, which did get confirmed by Amy Pascal. Um, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, a, a while ago she confirmed it, saying you know there will be three more you know Spider-Man movies of a new trilogy of Tom's movies. So I think that's going to be his college years because the way we leave this is that he is a senior this year, he's graduating, and you know the struggle we see him going through with you know MJ and you know uh, Ned um, is that they're getting rejected because they even they know Peter Parker, and again there is people that are rooting for Peter, people that want that that think Peter as a criminal for killing Mysterio pretty much so that is very interesting to me to see you know that we see Mysterio uh you know um you know uh Mysterio sympathizers that pretty much you know that like that are that are just think that Peter Parker's a murderer and you know a killer and a monster and we really see that from the beginning of the movie when you know his identity gets revealed he's you know it takes place literally right when the movie left off 
and he has to get to the he has to get back to the apartment. You know, you know, he has to try this. He's trying to stall. So Aunt May and Happy don't find out, but they find out, and you know, craziness happens. People are outside the apartment building. You know, people are throwing green paint on him, saying, you know, um, long live Mysterio, this, this, and that. And, you know, he's going into school, you know, the teachers are treating him different, his one gym teacher thinks, you know, he's a murderer, and kids are taking pictures around, pictures of him around the school, colleges are, you know, are turning down his applications, turning down Ned and MJ's applications just for working and being friends with Peter, and Peter under, like, Peter knows that they're just putting on a smile, knowing that it's getting to them, and knowing it's affecting their life, and they don't deserve it, he said it multiple times in this movie, you guys don't deserve this, you know, um, for, you know, for, you know, even though I didn't do what I did, you guys don't deserve what is happening, you know, to me, you know what I mean, you guys don't deserve this backfire, this anything, just because you guys helped me save the world, you guys don't deserve this, and you, this movie is really about Peter becoming the Spider-Man, Peter, you know, living up to his potential, Peter, understanding you can't you can't have it both ways you can't have it where you have a life like that and also you you're spider-man you try to keep your identity hidden all that stuff it's like we we see that and dr strange even says that when he goes to peter's at when peter asks him hey can you you know go back in time and make, make it so mysterio doesn't know who i am and you know strange is like i you want me to mess with the universe again after we just blipped back everybody and affected the universe like you want me to do that again and even if i had the time stone i can't do that because there would be consequences for if we did that and then, you know, he's like, I, I can make, Wong says, oh, you know, he forgot about, you know, he forgets about, you know, and Peter's like, okay, forget about it. And Wong's like, okay, he, you know, that shouldn't be too hard. Strange forgets about everything because Strange forgets to leave the art, f forgot to shut the Arctic tundra, um, you know, the Arctic, um, you know, um, the Arctic, you know, portal. So there's like, uh, there's snow everywhere. And, you know, he just, Wong is holding a grudge against it. Wong is the new, apparently he's the Sorcerer Supreme because, you know, Strange got blipped for those five years. So he actually ranked up Wong. So he is the Sorcerer Supreme. Um, so he actually, you know, when he says, oh, you know, he, you know, it shouldn't be too hard for Strange to forget about something. He's like, oh my God, if, is it cool if I use the, uh, the runes of Kafkal to, you know, to use a minor spell so, so people can forget that, you know, that, you know, Peter Parker Spider Man? And he's like, that could go to different multiverses. You can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and he's like, please, Wong. The kid hasn't the kid been through enough? And he's like, okay, leave me out of it. And, and then of course, Strange is like, okay, I will. But it's not. People think from the people thought from the trailers that Doctor Strange was Mephisto. I kind of was on that train thinking he is acting weird. But it was the editing that they did for this movie, so we wouldn't know what was going on. It was the editing making Strange sound weird and act and making it seem like he was different. Um, so. What was interesting to me is that people thought that he, Peter was just talking and then Strange messes up the spell. But it was, he, Peter kept messing with the spell when he kept saying, oh, like when he's like, okay, okay, see you, or, see you around, you know, Spider-Man, and, and, and nice knowing you, Spider-Man. Um, and he says, um, he's like, he's like, like, um, He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm making making it so everybody forgets Peter Parker or Spider-Man. He's like, does that mean MJ? Did, was she even like me? And he's like, did, did she like you before she found out you were Spider-Man? He's like, I don't know. And he's like, please, can you make it so she knows? And he's like, okay. And he had, he had to fix the spell again. He's like, okay. Um, everybody's going to forget Peter Parker or Spider-Man except MJ. And he said, oh, wh what about my friend Ned? And he's like, what's a Ned? He's like, what's my, he's my friend. And he's like, okay. You know, he does it a third time, okay? Everybody, everybody's gonna forget Peter Parker, Spider Man, but you know, except Ned and MJ. And he's like, oh, what, what about you know Aunt May or whatever? He's like, he's like, um, he's like, uh, we cannot mess with this spell anymore. And he's like, but me and Aunt May got really close and whatever, and it's good that she knows. And he's like, okay, fourth time around, okay, everybody's gonna forget Peter Parker, Spider Man, except Aunt May. Blah 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 blah. And he's like, oh, what about Happy? He's like, no, I'm not happy. You keep changing my spell, and you can tell it's getting glitchy and getting weird. And he's like, oh, you know, he's like, he's like, what's a happy? He's like, no, no, happy's a person, you know, uh, Harold Happy Hogan. He, he's, he was Mr. Stark's, you know, security guard, this, is not, that, and, and that's when he screws up the spell because there's too much energy mixed up and the spell has been tampered with. He's like, and the last thing he says, and this makes so much sense why all these villains that know Peter Parker or Spider-Man come to this universe, he's like, and so every, I want everybody to know that knew before that, I want everybody to know, everybody that knew I was Spider-Man, that Peter Parker with Spider-Man should still know, or whatever, yeah, yeah, and then that's what happened, that's what made all these villains come in, because he said, that everybody that knew that Peter Parker with Spider-Man should still know, meaning, that's what happens, and all the p villains that knew Peter Parker with Spider-Man came into his universe, like Electro, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, what is it, Electro, uh, Doc Ock, um, Sandman, um, you know, Lizard, uh, that, you know, the, all those, you know, Green Goblin, all these villains came back 
from their respected t- you know universes um at the points of which they were about to die and we get that in this movie we get the moments where they're like you know you know when uh when doc ock shows up on the bridge he's like when he finds out that actually he thinks he's fighting Toby's Spider-Man. He thinks he's fighting his Spider-Man. And, of course, our Spider-Man's like, well, no, I don't know what, where your machine is. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, but if you come down here, I can help you. And he's like, you really want to play games? Catch. And then the whole big fight happens. And, you know, Peter ends up going on that bridge because he's trying to reach the MIT lady that was at the Flash's mixer um, to, you know, stand up for Ned and MJ saying, you know, please don't let, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, please don't let MIT be dumb like me or whatever. Like, please, like, please, like, please don't let it be dumb just because of my mistakes. Don't punish them for what I did. You know what I mean? So just please let their great, their great, you know, you know, students, you know, they're great people. Please, you know, accept them. And she really sees, he was, you know, he is a hero. She really sees that I'm gonna, I'm gonna go tell MIT that you guys were great, and you know, I'm not just gonna do it for you, for your friends. I'm gonna do it for you too, Peter. And I really loved that fight sequence going down. Like the fight sequence was freaking awesome to see him, his Spidey sense go off, which was amazing. Finally, they added in a cool Spidey sense, and it was very reminiscent of the Spidey sense that you know Toby had, or actually not, not even just Toby, but like of how. Also, it was like a mix between Toby and Andrews, and I really, really enjoyed the way they did the Spidey sense in this in this movie. Um, so the fight sequence going down between him and Doc Ock was insane because what really sets it off is that he thinks he's fighting his Spider Man, and he's like, "What have you done to my sh- machine?" He's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." And he's like, "The sun at the palm and the palm of my hand, it's gone." What'd you do the way? He's like, "I don't know." And he's like, "You want to play games, catch?" And then the whole fight breaks out. I love the one scene when he, like he throws Peter into the FedEx car- truck. And he's like, I should have killed your little girlfriend when I had the chance. And then Peter's spider arms go up. And he's like, what did you just say? I loved that fight sequence that went down. I love it so much. And I just, I'm, I'm mind blown. This is probably the best Spider-Man action I've seen ever. And all the Spider-Man movies, I would say it's like, it, it, it's probably, I, I would say like this, I, it is. Like this Spider-Man action was the best Spider-Man action I've ever seen hands down i can't even like i I look at all the other movies and i'm like this just was the best action they had great they had a great stunt choreographer they had a great you know uh you know uh you know uh you know you know know, stunt you know uh, coordinators for the fight sequences everything like this this movie was just top notch all around the 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 cinematography the the filming angles of the fight sequences the fight choreography the stunt work like it was just all badass like it was so freaking sick my favorite scene though and also people were wondering why peter took off his mask when like a doc ox you know like you know uh you know arm was going at him it was so we wouldn't in cave his chest and wouldn't stab him because he ends up bringing out that knife that cut that he tried you know getting peter with in his universe um you know in the in, in the um in the final battle when he fights uh you know doc ock he picks up the uh the electrical grid wires and then when he's about to like stab you know peter he picks them up from from you know in uh, Spider Man one of the Raimi movies, he actually picks up the wires so that way he'll, he'll stab he'll stab the wires, not stabbing him. So I thought that was cool. It was a very reminisce moment, of, but it, it, but it didn't get his chest. That's why the it went from he took a piece off and it went from his you know mask to his whatever. He's like this is more important. I live and I don't care if my identity gets real because it's already revealed. So when he find, when he does that, he's like you're not my Peter Parker. But that gives Peter enough time because the nanotech that he took off of his chest went on his arms, and since that the nanotech is connected to his Iron Spider suit, he was able to take over the arms and able to get the one car from the MIT lady that she was hanging over the edge because Peter was trying to save her while he was trying to, you know, get him and try to hurt him and kill him and all this shit. So that was a cool moment when, like, he was able to use Doc Ock's arms to help him get back up and get the car back up there, and that's when the MIT lady says, okay, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, defend you, I'm gonna defend, um, you know, Ned, I'm gonna be defending MJ, you guys are great, I'm gonna, just make sure you stay out of trouble, and I could try to put in a good word for you guys to get you guys into MIT, this, this, and that. I think that's the college that they were, that, that, that he was standing, like, trying to get into, get them into, um, which was really awesome, um, but I could be wrong about which college, they named a lot of the colleges in this movie, but they, they all turned them down, but this was the one college I guess that he really wanted to go to or the last one that they really stood a chance at and this is the one he went for that was, I think it's the the same one um that Flash is going to if I'm correct um so that was really cool 
that, you know, she said that. And then that was really cool also because at this moment, when she runs off, she says, like, when she gets out of the car, after she said, okay, I'm going to go do all this for you, Peter, she says, oh, when I get out of here, come here. And she's like, you don't do that. And it was funny when she was just yelling at Doc Ock, at Otto, and he's swinging, and he's like, hey, hey, buddy, you know, I, I'm in control, so quit this stuff right now, you know what I mean? Like, quit it. Until I understand, you know, until you stop trying to hurt me, I'm in control. And that was just really cool. And then the moment where Green Goblin, you know, we just hear a ding, ding, ding. And because we see Peter's Spidey sense go off and he gets the thing on. And we hear the, the pumpkin bomb bouncing around and it explodes. And then that's when we see Green Goblin. And that's when Doctor Strange gets him out of there and gets, you know, of course, Otto out of there too. And puts him in the vault. He already has Lizard in the vault. And he has Doc Ock in the vault. And then at this point, he's letting Peter know, when you said, oh, I want everybody to know, everybody that knew I was P that Peter Parker was Spider-Man should still know, all these other villains came in from different universes and are causing mayhem. It's a problem. I captured, I captured, and that's when I ran into this lovely green sea monster in the sewer. You know what I mean? And now we have this dude. So, um, and he takes Peter's, you know, Iron Spider, you know, web shooter and turns it into this mystical, you know, web shooter. When he webs them, he'll send them into this prison that he has in the basement, um, which is called the Undercroft, where this, where this, you know, prison is being held. Um, and he's like, okay, so get out there and, you know, go fix this problem. He's like, okay, sir, if I'm going to fix this problem, I'm going to need help. And that's where MJ and Ned come in and they're, and, you know, they're going to be the, the guys in the chair while Peter is trying to go out and capture the rest of these villains, but he has to find out where they are. And when they come in, you know, MJ's like, oh, you know, it's technically since you did this spell, it's your fault. So there's, you know, a word that you could be saying and it's, it's called please. And he's like, please go Scooby-Doo this shit. So I loved that when he, it was shit, not Scooby-Doo this crap or Scooby-Doo this shit. I thought that was cool. Um, so, and he's like, you guys can set up in the undercroft and then Ned's like the undercroft. And it was literally a basement. It was a normal gross ass basement. And he's like, cool. I was like, that's so far. That's so Ned. And I love how Peter is still trying to clean his suit. Like he tried cleaning it when he ended up moving into, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, um, May and Peter ended up moving into Happy's place. You know, Star there's a lot of Stark technology in Happy's place, um, which makes sense because he's been working for Stark all that time. Of course, Stark would give him some security measures and stuff um, to protect him, especially when he outed himself as Iron Man when he finally announced he was Iron Man. So it makes sense that he would have a you know um, 3D printing Stark table there. So that which that does play a big key part in a lot of things of you know of saving uh, like our. Um, you know, a big plot, you know, thing in the story, um, so that was really cool to see how Peter's trying to clean his suit after, you know, one of the mysterious sympathizers threw green paint on him, he's trying to clean it with the lice Clorox wipes, that doesn't work, he tries to wipe his hands off, that's how he comes across the 3D printing, printing machine, um, and that comes back later in the story, and then he tries cleaning it again in Doctor Strange's basement, but with, like, this, uh, this, you know, I, I don't know, some other cleaning detergent, and, he, and you know, he's talking to May, um, and he's like, oh, you know, uh, like, she's like, just bring your suit by, and all dry cleaning and stuff. He's like, no, I gotta catch these guys first. And while he's cleaning it, he sees the inside of the suit, and it's the black and gold suit I wore to the premiere. And he says, oh, that could work. And I love that. Peter's thinking, he's using and he's using all and everything and all of his, like, um, anything that he can use, he's using. He's using his brain. He's thinking. He's doing all these, uh, uh, you know what I mean? He's, I feel like this was the the first movie that of his trilogy movies that I really saw him as Peter Parker and him really, like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, I feel like it's been a minute since he's been, like, needed to, you know, think. And this movie really puts it that he needs to take you know, use all the, the little scraps and do everything to really, and use anything he has in his arsenal to do this. So I really appreciate that he's limited to what he's able to use. And he's just going to flip his suit inside out and use what he can use. I loved that a lot. It's cool. Also, they find a nanny cam, like a, like a phone. They, they find, like, like you know, I, I, if I'm correct, they use, like Peter uses his cell phone and tapes it to his chest. And I, I think it was his cell phone or something. And it was really cool because I put that on my suit because I noticed it in the, in the final trailer. He had Ned and MJ on his chest and I put that on my suit so I thought that was cool um so I just love that suit so much it's probably one of my favorite suits um it, you know in the movie I love that suit I have it I own it I want to get the integrated suit at some point I will be getting at and I do want to get a suit 
at the end of the movie, which we'll, we'll, t- we'll talk in a minute about because I love that suit. Um, so at this point, he finds out, he gets a, a ping off of Ned's computer saying there's a, there was a guy that someone saw flying around in the forest. And he thinks it's green. He thinks it's the green dude, the jolly green, the, 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 the elf, the green elf or whatever. And he's like, and I love how like strange is like jolly. It sounds jolly, meaning there was a, like a green elf flying around. A jolly green elf. He's like, sounds jolly. And it was funny because at this point, I'm like, you're not going to go get Green Goblin. You think it's Green Goblin, but it's actually Electro flying around. I'm like, oh, bro, this is going to be a sick fight. You know what we're getting into? You you, you showed us the, the black and gold suit. You showed us the him you know, getting ready to go out there. I'm like, it's this time. It's happening. So he ends up going out. There. Well, actually, well, um, it's funny because he's talking about, okay, where's the suit? And he's like, he's like, it's probably the green, the guy in the green suit you know, on the glider I saw. And, he's, and then that's when Otto's like, Yo, um, you're, 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 you can't, you can't, uh, you're going out into the dark, not, you know, to go fight a ghost. And he's like, you know, he's like, you can't be them. And he's like, why? And he's like, you know, because, you know, he, uh, because, you know, he died or whatever. You, you can't be them. You're going out there and in the, in swinging in the dark, going out to fight a ghost. Like, and that, that was really cool to hear Otto say that because he's like, you know, you, 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 he's dead. You're going out to fight a ghost. You don't even know what you're doing. And, that was really what was, cool, what was cool to me is that we're getting all the things and it's like it's, it's scaring Peter to the point where like he's like okay and I love that I love how like of course in Otto's you know recollection is like is that yeah that is that um you know you know Osborne died he died so it's like I love that and he's like I but I saw him you're, with you with you talking about and he's like we t- he's like we're tired of your your uh your stupid questions boy and then that's why he said, you know, you can't beat him. You're, you're going swinging out in the dark, you know, fighting a ghost. He ends up swinging out there. He ends up, we end up seeing sand, sand going around. I'm like, oh my God, Sandman's out there too. I was like, my, I was like, oh my God, that scene, I was right. I did see Sandman that was protecting Peter in that scene. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to see Sandman and Electro and we're going to see Peter and we're going to see Sandman try to protect Peter. And it ended up, did actually ended up happening because when he sees, he hears like his spidey sense is going off and he's, and he hears the electricity and then that's when he gets the, you know, the, the Doctor Strange web shooter out and it like starts to glow and he ends up, and she's like, I don't like this, just shoot them. And then it goes through him and then we hear the Amazing Spider-Man 2 music with Electro, Electro's music and he ends up trying to shock Peter and Peter's just swinging around, swinging around and trying not to get shocked. My favorite part of, you know, Ned and MJ of, of the both of them is when they're both yelling at Peter saying, swing that way, swing this way. No, no, go left, go right, go this way, go that way. And he's like, please, let me just swing or whatever. And he gets electrocuted. He falls on the ground and then he's about to get electrocuted. Like it's like leading up to him, you know, he's shocking ground electro. And then and that's when Sandman comes in and says, Peter, it's me. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's me, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, Flint. And he's like, he was like, what? Whatever and he's like, I was like, I'm not your spider, I'm not your Peter, I'm not your Peter. He's like, what do you mean you're not my Peter? He's like, oh, just can you help me defeat this dude, and we'll talk more about it after. You, you know, you distract him, um, and, and you distract him. I'm gonna go pull the plug, and that was a cool sequence. Seeing Sandman and Peter work together, but he thinks it's his Peter. That was such a cool sequence. Like that was so freaking cool. Like that was my one of my favorite sequences. Seeing Peter out in the woods using whatever he can be using, had taped up phone. That's so Peter Parker. I love that so much. I love how we really got a Peter Parker feel. This is a Peter Parker movie, and I love it so much. So, so, so much. So seeing the moment where he's like, you know, they're working together, he's like, I can't hold them much longer, and Peter's trying to web all these lines up, trying to pull the grids so, you know, they, they it stops and he can power them down, and it finally works. And we see Jamie Foxx in his full glory. He looks different. Uh, he has yellow lightning instead of blue. Um, but I do love how he started off blue until he got all the lightning to power up, and then he powered down, and he's on his in his full form, normal. That was so cool. And I didn't ask too many questions about it. It's like it's believable. There's different technology there. You probably be sucking up this energy is probably what's making you different. Um, so I was like, I'm okay with this. This is fine with me. Um, my one nitpick is that we we don't see Flint Marco in his normal bo- like normal form until like the end end, which was kind of annoying. I'm like, why would you just keep him sand the entire time? Again, it's a little minor nitpick. I'm, I don't really care, but it's just kind of annoying to me because I really wish that we would have saw more of him as normal. Especially when he gets into the prison, you think he would have been like... All the other powers aren't really working for everybody else. You think he would just be able to just... 
un- unwind and just be normal. I-, I don't know. It was kind of weird to me, but I was it was acceptable. I'm like, okay, it's fine. It's whatever. Um, so I loved it though because when he's when he uh, when he's like, you're just gonna you guys are just gonna stand there and pretend I'm not butt ass naked. You know what I mean? He's like, and then I love how Clint's like, Clint, um, you know, Flint's like, yep. And then Peter's like, oh, and he gets some clothes, but sends them into the, uh, the, the, the Undercroft prison. And then he's like, you know, and then, and then, uh, Flint's like, what'd you do to him? Did you kill him? And he's like, you know, he's like, you know, he's like, you know, um, you know, Flint, you need to trust me. He's like, I don't, no, I don't trust you. I don't trust anybody. He tries to punch Peter, but Peter sends him into the prison too. And then Peter ends up going back, but he's before, before he goes back, he tells, you know, MJ and Ned saying, you know, I, I know, are they, is, uh, did you guys just get an uh, electric dude and a sand dude? And they're like, and she's like, yes. And he's like, I'm just going to go clean this place up real quick. I don't want people, you know, blaming, blaming me for this. And, you know, they told me to stay out of trouble. So they put in a good word for us at, you know, MIT. So I'm just going to do it real quick and I'll be back. And he ends up getting back there. Um, ends up, you know, talking to well, to everybody when he ends up getting back there. But we cut, we take a cut scene to see Norman, and Norman is literally he's normal Norman right now. But the mask is talking to him. His darker half is talking to him, and we see a parallel when he slams the mask, and we see the mask laying there by the by the trash can by a dumpster, and he ends up running off. It's very reminiscent of the moment of um, you know, Spider Man Two. Where, you know, Peter loses his powers, he ends up putting his, he says no more and puts a suit in the trash can, and he ends up walking away. That was very reminiscent of the same sequence. I love the foreshadowing they have going on. I loved it a lot, meaning he's leaving that side of himself behind, Norman, his bad side, and he ends up actually going to Feast to talk to May because... At this point, he's looking for a Peter Parker because he knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And as we all know, everybody knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man now. So when he goes to the feast and goes to May, he ends up, you know, May ends up calling him and says, the guy, you're lo- the green guy that you were looking for, he's here. And he th- and he thinks, Peter at this point thinks he- May's in danger and is running through feast saying, where's May, where's May? And he ends up seeing Green Goblin and just normal, just being chilled and saying, I don't know what's happening. I have another half of another half of me that, you know, likes to take over. I need help. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I you know. There's people living in my house. You know, my son is you know somewhere else. Um, there is no you know there is no Oscorp. Like I don't know what's happening. I need help. And at this point, we really see the the main plot of the story is Peter doesn't think this is his problem that these villains are where they're at, and he doesn't think it's his problem to you know to try to save them or try to fix the problem. He thinks of himself of like I'm just. You know, like, you know, I'm just, you know, I need, uh, like, I need to just send them back. I don't care what's going to happen to them. I just need to send them back. It's not my problem. And I love how May's like, oh, is it's, it's, oh, so is it, is it, um, is it not, is it, uh, is it, is it, is it well, who's this benefiting them or is it benefiting you? I loved that because he says, he says he'll benefit them to send them back, but really he's being selfish. He doesn't care about what they're going through. He just wants to send them back and try to benefit him, do stuff that benefits him. That's in his favor, his way. And that's we, what we've seen of Peter. He likes to be, he does like to be, um, you know, you know, you know we've seen it sometimes where he like, he likes to, you know what I mean? Actually, well, we really saw it in this because, you know, he he wants to be selfish at this point. He he's, he's like, it's not my problem. They're they're a different world's problem. They're, you know what I mean? We just gotta fix the pro- I gotta fix the problem, send them back. But we really could tell how afraid they are. And when we, we find out that you know when uh when Doctor well when I guess when uh when you know uh, Flint explains it saying you know Doc Ock you died Otto you died. Um, you know, uh, you know, Osborne, you died at both the, uh, the Spider-Man and then Peter finds out. And then at this point he's like, Oh, Dr. Strange is like, Oh, you found another one sends, um, Osborne into one of the prison cells. And at this point he's just normal Osborne saying, please help. I don't want to get sent back. And they all know that they're going to be sent back to their death. And he's like, and, and they're all denying it too. They're all like, uh, you know, Otto's like, I, I had Spider-Man by the neck and then I, and he's like, and then I, oh my God, I, I think I, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, he's in his head. He's like, oh my God, I think I did die. And then we see, of course, uh, you know, uh, we see, uh, Norman saying when, when Otto says you're dead, you're the walking corpse. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, you died. And he's like, you're, you're ridiculous. You're crazy. I didn't die. But, and then of course, then he confirms it, you know, uh, Flint. And then the next thing you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, what, what is it? Uh, try, I don't know, my head. I can't remember his name. Um, what is it? What is it? Uh, Electro's name. I can't believe I'm forgetting. Um, 
what is it? What is it? What is it? Max. Max is like, oh, you know, you. I, I had Spider Man. I was kicking Spider Man's ass. You could ask. You could. You could ask him. You know what I mean? And then. And I was yeah, I was kicking Spider Man's ass. You can ask him or whatever. He's like, you know, I I just you know I, I was saved. I was getting power. I was getting become full energy. And then he's like, oh shit, I was about to die. <laughs> I, I loved that. I love Jamie Foxx's acting. Jamie in this. Foxx's acting. I would say this was like his best portrayal of you know Electro. I'm so happy that he got to come back to this role and really you know. He, he didn't even like a, a cooler, crazier job. And like you know, I mean, really. Yo said, "This is my time to shine. We're gonna do it right this time." You know, I know people didn't like it before, but we're really gonna do it this time. And I really, he did, he did an outstanding performance um, from everybody. But he was really big. Keep, in my opinion, he was up there with you know, you know, um, with you know Alfred Molina and you know Willem Dafoe, and uh, you know he was he was up there of the ones that stole the show. I'd say the three of them stole the show like spectacularly, like they did. Um, but I loved it. He's like you know I was kicking Spider Man's ass. You could ask him. He's like I was you know I was in the grid collecting all about to become full you know uh, full on energy. And he's like and then oh shit I was about to die. I, I loved that. Like I loved his I loved his. His moments he had, I was just dying. It was great, and I loved how like everybody was like surprised. Lizard was talking, like the dinosaurs talking. That's what Ned said. He was so like floored by. It. He's like, oh my god, the dinosaurs talking. I just I loved how everybody thought he was a dinosaur, and I loved how Peter's like, I did not know you could talk or whatever you, in, until now. I loved that, and that doesn't happen until after the point of, you know, Strange is about to literally send them back, saying, you know, it's meant for them to die. It, it's that's their fate. I'm sorry, kid. And he's like, I'm sorry too. Ends up taking the box that's gonna send them back to their to their doom, um, and he ends up fighting Strange literally in the mirror dimension. I kid you not, this movie. This movie's like you know fight sequences, you know cinematography, CGI was top notch. That fight between Strange and Peter was one of the coolest fights I've seen ever. Especially he fought him in the mirror dimension and he won. Peter Parker literally won fighting Doctor Strange. I never thought I would see that, but he used his brain. He used Peter Parker. He he used his brain. He used what makes him Spider Man. His, his Peter Parker makes Spider Man, and he finally uses his brain to the point where he's like, I know ge he's just a, 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 the mirror that I mentioned is just geometry. I'm good at geometry, and I love that. I love. How I was like, he's like just you know making all like the webs. He's like, okay, do this, do that, do this, do that, and he said, hey, Strange. And he's like, or hasty, yeah, he's like, oh, and he like traps Strange, takes his sling ring, and then he says, I'm sorry, I, I, I he's like, he's like, I'm sorry about this, but I have to try, and it closes, so he takes Strange's sling ring, and he takes the device that's gonna send them back, because he doesn't want to just send them back to their doom, he wants to cure them, so when they go back, they're fine, they can live their lives, they can be alive, and that is great storytelling to me, because it's like, I want to know how their lives have went, like, I want to know if we'll ever know how their lives are going, now that they have a second chance, and we really see that through the movie, is that they don't trust Spider-Man, they don't, and I love that element of they don't trust Spider-Man, even though they're, all the other Spider-Man in their universe has tried helping them, they just didn't see it, and it was very cool to see this this Peter say, you know what I mean, like, said, you know, putting, you know, he said, I want to help you guys do this, and I'm going to give you a choice. It's either, you know what I mean, like, you know, I want to help you guys, you know, cure you guys, and then send you back home, so you guys can, you know, you know you're not sent to your doom. And he's like, but you're going to have to trust me. He's like, okay, so Lizard's like, trust you, or, you know, or be sent to our doom. It's really not much of a, I mean, either way we might die. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, we don't really have much of a choice, do we? It's either we die or we die, essentially, because, again, they don't trust him. He's like, you're just going to have to trust me, man, or whatever. And he lets all them out. But before he lets all them out, I love it because he's like, oh, like, I'm going to need some help. And I love how this is the moment all the entire audience was laughing and cheering is when Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin says, hey, um, you know, Peter, I'm someone of a scientist myself. I was like, yes, the famous meme, bro. I was dead. I was like, yes. I was like, he finally, he said the line. He said the line because we, we wanted them to say that line. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I loved that because it's it's true. He's gonna he him and you know Otto end up helping him make the cures back at Happy's apartment. I love how Happy has his like you know his baby security cam, and he ends up seeing like you know seeing you know Max walk in, ends up seeing you know Flint walk in, ends up seeing you know uh you know Osborne walk in, and of course you know uh you know Otto walk in. And Lizard is in the feast truck, you know, chilling in there, and they're all trying to figure out, you know, mainly Otto, and of course, you know, um, 
and Osborne are trying to figure out to make the cure and how to cure everybody. He's figuring out how to cure himself, but also he's helping Peter trying to figure out. He says, "You're up first, Doc, or whatever." Meaning, you know, you know, Otto, he's up first to get the fix the inhibitor chip so he can think for himself, and the and the, and the arms aren't taking over. Which I really enjoyed, Peter having the scientists the scienty moments that Peter should have. That is the best part about Spider Man is when he's acting like Peter Parker when he's doing it the sciencey stuff, figuring out the problems, using his brain is the strongest element of Spider Man. So seeing him really ha- and also ha- do a cool sciencey montage with Osborne I loved that so much. Seeing Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, Osborne sciencing it up with Tom Holland Spider Man, like that's insane. Who who thought we would ever see that? So seeing that really made me happy, but it also made me sad because I'm like, I don't trust him. He has that other side. W- what's gonna happen? But I wasn't thinking about the other side, right? Like really, I was thinking about, oh my god, because he said, you know, if you ever he asked Peter, if you ever think about, you know, s- you know, commuting to a different universe, and then that's when they get the chip to work. He's like, I think I got it. I think I got it. He's like, you know, may turn that on, turn it on, and then he ends up pretty much, you know, putting the new chip in. And then, you know, he goes limp for a second, Otto, and he says, and he's like, I can finally hear clearly now. And he says, thank you, boy. I appreciate it. Thank you. And he says, don't, you know, don't mention it. You know what I mean? And then that made me happy. That made me teary eyed because I wish that, you know, Toby Spider-Man could do that for him because that's what he wanted to do for him. And it made me, it made me so happy that Otto is back to being Otto. I, I, I literally was tearing up. I'm like, I love how Peter is helping them. I love how he did do this. You know, wasn't you know you know you know listened to May and decided to help, and May and and I love how May really put him in this place, saying it is your problem. You know what I mean? It is your problem. You know what I mean? This is what we do. I loved that. She, I loved that. She's she's trying. She's. I love how she's setting up the path of him becoming Spider Man, him taking the responsibility. I loved that in this movie. So. You know when 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 it works for him, and then you know it's and he and he's about to do, of course, Electra next puts the this device on him that's going to get all the energy out of him. Um, you know all the electricity except the electricity that makes him live, which he makes that joke saying, "Oh, I'm not all the electricity." Of course, you need electricity to live. Your brain, and everything is like I don't know why I'm trying to explain. You know electricity to you, and he's like, "Let me ask you one question: Are those your Legos?" I was like, "Dead." I was so freaking. I was so dead. JB Fox's little like zingers had me dying. So I loved that moment. And then when it's on him, he's like, "I'll be right back," because. You know he's going to go check on um I think on Osborne at this time if I'm correct or check on somebody and then he's like this doesn't feel right and then Flint and, and Flint's like hey the, the the quicker you get through this the quicker we can get we get to go home and then uh, that's when you know shit starts going sideways you know um one of the one of the uh you know uh you know um J. Jonah Jameson's reporters sent, you know, sent somebody out to go find Peter, found Peter, got, and then it followed him to, you know, uh, Happy's place where he's hiding out, and, you know, they're there with the news cameras, they called in damage control, or they called in, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, um, they called in the FBI or something, because they said that there was, like, you know, a destruction going on right now, and he wants to catch Peter in the act or whatever, and next thing you know, Peter gets a spidey sense tingling because, as we all know, you know, uh, lizards in the truck, a feast truck outside, and he gets this sense of danger and something going wrong or someone's planning something. And he ends up looking around the room. He ends up getting out of the room. Otto and uh, you know, um, Otto and you know, um, and Osborne end up walking behind Peter. And then we see Ele- you know, Electro standing over there, Max. And we see, of course, uh. You know, you know, you know, Flint standing there, and he's just looking around. And they're like, "What's wrong?" And then, you know, I love how Max is like, "Why are you looking at me like that?" And then he, that's when he's like, he's he closes his eyes, Peter, you know, trusting his sense on who it is, and he webs Osborne, and he's like, "That's a nifty trick you got there." And of course, I love how others like, you know, Osborne. No, he's like, you know, Osborne's on sabbatical. I was like, yes. I was like, this is so sick. And he's saying. He's saying, "Oh, you're you're trying to cure us. This is a gift. Gods don't have to. Gods don't have to. You know. Uh. You know. Uh. Gods could take whatever they want. This, this, and that. And of course, that's when shit goes sideways. Freaking Otto gets thrown out the window by Electro. You know, Sandman leaves. Uh." Otto ends up leaving and leaving, like leaving and like fleeing the scene. Uh, Lizard ends up breaking out of the out of the uh, feast uh, feast uh, truck. And I love how uh, you know um, I love how you know uh, was it uh, J. Jonah Jameson saying is that was that was that a dinosaur? 
that was funny as hell just hearing him say that and just seeing all the destruction go down of like the fighting between lizard on the building um throwing you know uh peter back in the building when he and peter's fighting osborne and seeing strength versus strength and seeing i love i wanted a moment where it's like because I craved those moments of like, this is Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. Let's see him fight our Peter Parker. Let's see that. Like, let's see him. Because he pretty much is the reason that that everybody, a lot of the a lot of the members that are willing to you know get helped are turning, and, and uh, from you know Green Goblin's speech, you know Electro ends up saying, no, I'm I'm going to become a god. I'm not doing this. Ends up taking from the three D printed Stark table, the the uh, Arca reactor, which is what powers the table. And, and he ends up being stronger and something ends up, you know, leaving, you know, Flint ends up leaving and, you know, Otto ends up leaving. Here I am thinking, oh my God, you, you got shocked. Is your chip ruined again? You're bad right now. What's happening? And that fight going down where like, you know, him and Osborne are like, you know, punching him and Green Goblin are just punching each other. I love when he, you know, Peter jumps up on Green Goblin and is just like punching him in the face and he's just laughing at Peter, slams him through the ground, throwing him through buildings and stuff like that. Like through like drywall, through, you know, slam and like they're going through, through, slammed him and they're going through floor to floor to floor and I'm getting to the main floor and I love how, you know, he told May to leave with all like the antidote stuff, like stuff that make them, you know, normal. And she tells like her to run so we could fight and you know so that we make could get away with all the stuff to save them, and that was a sad moment because when they get to the main gr- the main floor, May ends up trying to save Peter and then we see the glider outside and here I am thinking oh my god it's gonna happen this is a reverse like this is the same bullshit he did with Toby but he's doing it with May knowing she doesn't have a spidey any spidey sense or anything and Peter can't get to her because he's literally beat the crap, he's being held by his hair, he's being, he got, you know, he got stepped on, he had his head off of, you know, a piece of rubble, like, he is beat the shit, Osborne is no joke, Green Goblin is a menace, he's bad, he's, I was like, oh my god, no, no, please, no, when, when Aunt May got hit with the glider, I thought she died at first, and then when he threw, and he ends up throwing the pumpkin bomb, I was like, no, because he ends up throwing it over towards May, saying he's like, I'm going to fix you by doing this, and then he does that, and then she ends up dodging for it, ends up hitting it, but it explodes the entire place, blows up the building even more, he blows up outside the the like the, the feast truck, the, the outside the building, the FBI is on their way, and literally he ends up, you know, May gets up, ends up going over to Peter, Peter's ribs are broken, and May is stumbling around, I'm like, okay, he's like, are you okay, he's like, yeah, just, she's like, yeah, I just got knocked on my ass, you know what I mean, and, and he's like, oh, she's like, okay, let's like, you know, he's like, let's get out of here, and then May just drops, and then Peter's like, oh, are you okay, are you okay, and she starts bleeding, and I'm like, oh no, I said, oh no, I literally, because when she got hit, I was like, no, something's up, something is up, she's acting weird, and when she was on the ground and, you know, and he, he sees all the blood, he's like, it's okay. And she's like, uh, you know, I'm fine. I just need to catch my breath. I'm okay. And he's like, you, you, he's like, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. He's like, I, I need a medic. Somebody help, please. Um, you know, and then it was just seeing him sit there with her. And, and she's like, I just need to catch my breath. And her, you know, taking her last breath. Or whatever that made me super sad, guys. I was bawling in the theater. I was like, no. And then when and when he kept trying to talk to her, even though he's like, May, please speak to me, please, May, please. You know what I mean? Like, talk to me. And then and I, it was sad when he said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Because when the FBI get there and Happy gets there, Happy sees his face, no, and sees what and knows that she's dead, and he's just like. You can tell his heart was broken, and he was about to cry and go into tears. Like, he didn't know, he's like, why, why? And then he gets pulled out of the car, gets slammed on the car, and then he says, Peter, the run, and you get, he's just kissing, you know, May's head saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? And, and just seeing May there, I'm getting just choked up thinking about it, guys. Like, that was such a sad scene. But before she ends up dying, she tells him, you know, don't listen to what Osborne says this is what you're supposed to be doing you have power and with great power there must also become great responsibility and i was like she said the fucking line i said oh my god it, it all came together she has been the uncle ben all this time this is his origin story this is that this is that origin story this is what makes him 
become our Spider-Man. This is what makes him get the responsibility, take the responsibility. This is the moment that makes him become Spider-Man. I realized that. I said, oh my god, how this was in front of our face the entire time. And everybody's sleeping on Aunt May, just thinking she's hot and shit. I'm like, oh my god. She has been that Uncle Ben that entire time. I'm like, I was flipping out. I was flipping out. I was like, she said it. The whole audience was like, oh my god, she said it. And then I was like, and it was just, it was beautiful to hear. But it was so sad because she died. And, and the last thing she even said is like, we did the right thing. And that, and, and I love that because that comes around right when he leaves, you know, because he, get, he gets shot. But at this point, the Iron Spider's on him, the new integrated suit with his, no, his, with his Far From Home suit that, you know, Otto gives back after he's able to control himself now with the new inhibitor chip. So it, like, bounces off of him, but he still feels it or whatever. It ends up getting out of there. And May, and they pan back on May, and her eyes are open, and she's dead. And I just, I, guys, I kid you not, I was I was bawling. I was so sad. And then the point when, like, Yo, J. J. Jenny Jameson's on the news saying, yo, as I said, everybody, this is a time of, you know, of, um, of mourning or whatever. You know, anybody that comes close to Spider-Man dies and, you know, and he, and he's a menace, you know, God help, God help us all. And just seeing, that was a beautiful shot seeing Peter looking up at the Jumbotron and he's in the rain. He's all sad. He has blood all over his face. He has blood. It's a blood all over the bag May was holding. And he still keeps hearing in his head the same thing over and over again. That, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like he just keeps hearing her say the last words that she said or whatever and just saying and you know, he just keeps hearing it over and over again and he blames himself for what happens and he wants revenge he wants revenge and at this point MJ and Ned are back at you know Ned's you know uh you know uh you know uh you know grandmother's house and he's and he's staying there with with uh MJ in the box that's going to send everybody back and he and he tells MJ and Ned, please stay there. I can't. I can't do what I'm supposed to be doing. Because well, and then think about trying to keep you guys safe. I need to put all focus on here without having to worry about you guys being in danger. Please just do this for me. I'll call you when things are okay. And he doesn't call. All, all we know that there was a one. There was one. Uh, you know, casualty at, at you know at uh, you know the the building that Peter was at. And the, and there's and, the, and there's no answer from Peter. They don't know what's going on. They're scared, and she's like, "I'm gonna push it." And and then Ned's like, "I just wish I could see Peter." Because earlier in the film, when you know Ned gets in the Sanctum Sanctorum, he mentions that you know his grandmother said that they have magic in the family, and he has tingling in his in his in his in his fingers. And he's like, "We well, should probably go see your uh, your uh, your um." Your um, your um, you should probably go see your uh, your ophthalmologist. You probably go see your ophthalmologist or whatever. Meaning you don't have magic, but then he's like, I just wish we could see Peter, and he has a sling ring on, mind you. And I'm like, oh my god, and then and then I'm just like, what'd you just do? And he's like, I don't know. And he's just like, do it again. I just wish we could see Peter. And then the thing opens, and they're like, Peter, Peter, and mind you, when that portal opened. I was like, that is not your Peter Parker. I said, oh my god, the alleyway, the the big eyes. I'm like, that is Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I said, oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. I screamed. I said, guys, that's Andrew Garfield. Oh my god. Everybody in the audience was flipped now because we were all like, who is that? Who is that? I was like, that's Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. Everybody's like, oh my god, oh my god. And then we just see, he's like, Peter, they're all like, they're dead, they're like, Peter, come on, Peter, come on. And we just see Peter running and then jumping in. And everybody's like, that's Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, oh my God. And he's like, who are you? And he takes off. And that's, that's what he makes his, his, that's when we all know for sure. I mean, even though I gave it away with the big eye lenses in the classic Amazing, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, Andrew Garfield is in the MCU. He's in this movie. Oh, it's happening. Oh my God. I was just, oh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um. He's like, I'm, my name is Peter Parker, and I, I know this is my I'm in, I know this is my universe. I know I needed help, and that's why I'm here. And I'm like, oh my god, he must have got some Spider Sense stuff saying that he needed help because that's what it seems like what he's saying. And he's like, and, and I love how like prove that you're Peter Parker. He's like, I don't j carry around my identification. That kind of defeats the purpose of the whole mask and everything, and the whole sacred identity thing. And she's like, prove it. And he's like, I need to, and she keeps throwing bread at him. And he's like, I th I'm just checking, you know, I'm, I'm just checking if you have the tingly thing. He's like, I do have the tingly thing, just not for bread. And then she's like, and he throws another piece of bread at him. And she's like, you know, uh, you know, and she's like, I understand. He's like, I understand you, 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 you know, you're, you're very, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, cautious on trust. 
I, I get that. And he ends up jumping, sticking to the to the ceiling, and that made me cry just when he did that. He's like, I get that you don't trust people, and I respect that. <laughs> and it was funny. And he's like, oh, she's like, that's not. And he's like, she's like, crawl around. And he's like, I'm not crawling around. This. Uh, and she's like, I need more proof. And he's like, this is plenty. And then of course, you know, Ned's grandmother's like, okay, can you ask him to go get the cobweb in the corner? And he's like, my my, my abuelita said, you know, um, you know, can you please go, uh. You know, can you, or I think that, I forget what, you know, Ned, Ned called his grandmother, but he said, I mean, my grandmother said, can you please go get the cobweb that's up in the corner since you're up there? And he's like, sure. Puts his mask in his mouth, crawls across the ceiling, and then gets the cobweb, gets down, and sells his mask in his mouth, and goes like this. And he's like, we good? And he's like, okay. He's like, I, and Ned's like, I guess I open the portal to the wrong, you know, Peter Parker's universe. And I guess, and then MJ's like, okay, well then keep, op- keep, you know, trying until you get the, uh, the until you get the right Peter. And, um, and then he's like, and he's like, fine, Peter Parker find peter parker find peter parker and then and finally another portal opens and then it peers on mj peers on or peers on ned peers on mj and then toby mcguire walks out oh my god guys i kid you not the audience was so loud and, and it was moving bro it was so it was so energetic, guys. I, we live for these moments, guys. We live for these moments. This is why being in the cinema means so much because it's so nice to share this with fans. It's so nice to be with fans. We're all family at the end of the day. When we, when we, when we, when we, when we, when we we're, we're family, guys. When we, when we watch these movies, it's a family. We're all one big family, and it's true. Stan Lee said it best. When you know Marvel, you know Marvel celebrates the movies. It's true. We're all one big family. And we celebrate these moments and we rally together to live these moments together. And it's so important at the theaters because you you make friends at the theaters. You make conversations at the theaters. I mean, you, when we when we all dress up, we we cheer for one another. We want to take pictures with one another. We we live for these moments. So when it finally happened that we're fine, we, the, our, the speculations have been true. It was ecstatic. It was insane. It was cool. I was like, oh my God, this is insane right now. And he says, and she's like, who are you? He's like, I'm Peter Parker. And I just, I just walked through here and he's like this portal and now it's gone. And then he's like, and then I love it because they were like, um, we all, like, like, why are you here? He's like, oh, I sensed that your friend needed help. And he's like, he's like, I know you guys, but I, I don't know him. And they're looking at each other. And I'm thinking they're both having a Spidey sense moment. And they both end up running on the wall. And they both end up shooting webs at each other. But I love how Toby ends up getting his web on Andrew's web shooter and stops it. And he ends up pretty much going like... And I'm like, yes, that's my boy Toby. I was like... like I love that. I love seeing Toby be Spider-Man again. Oh my god. After all, it's been it's been years, guys. That that probably meant like that made me jump more, even more, seeing Toby with his like with his like you know, just doing web shooting again, doing all the cool stuff again. I was just, I was just in the moment. I was so happy and seeing him and Andrew shoot webs at each other because they they just want to make sure that they who who they say they are. I loved that. It was like it was a reminiscent moment of like he wanted to make sure like how MJ wanted to make sure that was Peter Parker. He wanted to make sure that was Peter Parker. And and you know and Toby wanted to make sure that was Peter Parker because he's like I don't I don't know why you're here I don't know who this is or you're not supposed to be here and they have that moment and I love how she says can you please please clean up the webs and and Ned's like my grandma says can you please clean up your webs and he's like oh I'm sorry this this and that and they end up cleaning up the web and they end up having a moment saying you know we're here because y- your friend needs us here we could, we we felt it that's why we're here and he's like you know we don't know where he is and he's like is there any place he would go to be, to be, you know, in private, and I love how Andrew's like, you know, I had the, um, you know, Empire State, and then he said he had the, uh, and Toby's like, I had some building, um, and he's like, you know, better view from the Empire State, that's what Andrew said, and then Toby's like, yeah, it's a good view, and I just love how they were talking, Spider-Man to Spider-Man, I loved that moment, I loved it so much, so, and he's, and he's like, I think I know the place, and it was the same, it was the place that they were up on the roof earlier at the school, the one quiet place that they could be alone, and that's where they're hugging Peter and they're sad for his loss because they know that Aunt May is dead. They know that he's the only thing that they have that he has left is them. And I love when uh, Ned and MJ were like, yeah, hey, you have some visitors. And we see we see Toby and Andrew's Spider-Man just up there like that. I'm like, oh, God, that's so cool. That's so cool. I need to get that framed. Them just up there like that because that was fire. The shots with them the camera work the shots that they knew we wanted it was so cool and i love it he's like when they jumped down he's like whoa 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 
and and then they're just Andrew standing up and Toby's standing up and and then Toby's like, we, I know what you've been through. He's like, don't you don't you dare say you know what I've been through or whatever. You know, I, I I'm angry. I'm done. I want to kill this. I want to kill him. Just just don't. And he's like, I, I I'm I'm done. You, you just the, 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 I'm gonna send him back to your problem. If you guys killed him, that's on you. I'm done. And he tries taking the box from MJ. MJ's like, no, listen to me. He's like. My uh, my uncle Ben died, and I I, I and I know how that I know, I know what you've been through. My uncle Ben died, and he's like Gwen, Gwen was my MJ, and you know she died, and I I, I hold myself responsible for that, and I, I I do and I do this every day, me being Spider Man for her, and but I got I got I I stopped pulling my punches though. I got angry. I got bitter. And I don't want that happening to you. I don't want you to become me. And he's like, you know, I and I, you know, my I, I hunted down my my I, I, I hunted down who I thought was my uncle Ben's killer, and I tr- I, and I tried killing him. I got what I wanted, and we we don't want that for you. And it was really powerful to hear that. And he says, you know, even after you know, um, even after you know May die, I still hear her voice. But even then, she even after she even when she before she died, she said we did the right thing. And as she died, she said we did the right thing. And I keep, and you know, and she also said, you know, with great power. And then that's when Toby's eyes just burst open with light. He says, "Comes great responsibility." And he's like, "How do you know?" And Toby and Tom's like, "How do you know that?" And then, and I love how, you know, uh, Andrew Spiderman was like, you know, um, Uncle Ben said it. And then that's when Toby finishes it before he died. And that was like, guys. The writers really knew what we wanted. I-, I cried. I was like, "This is so beautiful." So you got these Spider Men talk, and they're co- and they're and they're connecting, and they're understanding, and if anybody understands, they understand. And that just made me super happy to for them to have that conversation. And they're and I love it because you know, from there, they end up you know going to come up with a, a cure to cure everybody. And he's like, "We need to cure everybody, right?" Or you know, that's what we do. We got to go do this. So they're all sciencing up doing what they do best and seeing that cool sequence go on i thought we were getting the original spider-man music from the spider-man you know from the from the raimi series i thought we were gonna get it because i heard the dun, 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 dun. i was i heard like the you know what i mean like the beginning of it i was like oh my god we're gonna get it we're gonna get it but we didn't get it which is kind of annoying i wish we did just see but we did get some of the score towards the end of the movie when they start healing people we get the raimi score some of it and we get um the amazing score is some of it. You know what I mean? So we did get some of it. Um, so I was very happy that they at least put that in for those sequences. But seeing how he tries to get all the villains to go to the Statue of Liberty. Uh, mind you, it's getting it's under the construction right now. It's getting a Captain America shield. And I'm thinking it's because of them, you know, doing the promotion for the new Captain America. I think this is a time with John Walker. I think that that's why they're putting up the shield at the time. Or it just be could, might be just because of... Uh, you know, Captain America sacrificing himself and everything, and that's why they're doing it. Um, I don't really know yet. There really wasn't much, you know, um, explanation on why they're doing it, except they're just doing a remodel, and a lot of people were against it. Um, but I love how, like, Peter ends up going on, you know, on a uh, live stream with J. Jonah Jameson and says that, you know, um, you know, um, I, I really tried helping you guys. Um, I really did. You know, I could have sent you guys back whenever I wanted, but I didn't. Um, but you know, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna give you guys a second chance where second chances are, are um you know when where where uh what what second chances are st- when what stands for second chances? I'm at the place what stands for second chances. This this and that. And he's and then that's when J. Jones Jameson's like, oh my god, he's gonna ruin another monument. He's gonna destroy another monument. This this and that. And then he tells you know Peter, you know uh, it's Toby's Peter to get ready, guys. Like and he tells Andrew's Peter to get ready, guys. You know they're gonna be here soon. And then they're having a conversation about the the uh, Toby's web shooter and everything. And he's like, uh, "So you you make your web inside yourself?" And he's like, "He's like, um, yeah." He's like, "Are you making fun of me?" And then Tom's like, "Tom Spider Man was like, no, no. We just want to know how you're able to do that because we can't do that." And he's like, "Does it come anywhere? Does it just come from your wrist or uh, anywhere else?" And he's like, "No. It's like I I wish I could explain it to you guys, but it's kind of just like breathing. You know, I just you know, it's 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 like you can't explain it. It just happens. Like I don't know how it happens. And I love also previously before that, you know." 
they were they were um you know he's like oh my back and he's like yeah my, it's just my back and I'm like oh my god get it my back from Spider Man two and I think Tobey Maguire actually hurt his back on set of Spider Man two so it was very reminiscent of oh my god anyways like my back yeah he's like it's just like and he's like it's just my back and I was like get yeah. I was like get it guys you get it I was like that's that's funny I was like that's cool and he's like Can I, you want me to crack it for you and seeing. Andrew Spider-Man cracked Toby Spider-Man's back. He's like, I love how Andrew said, I even have a lower back problem too. He's like, and I love how Toby's like, it's because of all the swinging. He's like, yeah, I have a lower back problem too. That's what Andrew says. He cracks it for him. He's like, oh yeah, it feels great. And he's like, and then Andrew's like, Spider-Man's like, oh, I was one of the, I was one of the brothers. And, and it was, they were just talking about the web flu and everything. And they were talking about, oh, who's, who, who, um, what was the most, um, interesting villains you guys have fought? And he's like, the hardest villains you guys have fought is like seeming you guys have met some of them uh, seeming you've met some of them already and he's like oh i'm lame well and they was and um you know uh toby was talking about and i fought an um and uh you know a black gooey alien um you know I, you know from space i fought one of them and, and tom's like oh i fought a purple alien you know on earth and in space and then of course i love how andrew spider-man's like you know i'm lame i only fought was a a russian in a you know and um you know in a in a, in a, in a iron uh you know, uh, rhino suit, and he's like, he says, let's take a step back to the fact you said you're lame, you are amazing, I just need you to understand that, you are amazing, I just feel like this could be a, a, a motivational moment, like, you are amazing, I hope you know that, he's like, oh, I just needed to hear that, thank you, right, thank you, I appreciate that, meaning that I love that, I love how, like, the writers are trying to tell us that it's not cool to shine on other people's favorite Spider-Man. They even they even did that in this movie on purpose, saying that you know people trash on Andrew Spider-Man, but it's a different Spider-Man. I love how like the writers are trying to tell us, and even Andrew, Toby, and Tom probably all wanted to put that in there. Like let's let's like build each other Spider-Man up. Let's let's love each other Spider-Man. Every Spider-Man's a different in in incarnation of Spider-Man. Like why we got hate on who loves which Spider-Man? It's Spider-Man at the end of the day, and we all love Spider-Man, and that's, the, that's what they were trying to tell us. It's all Spider-Man at the end of the day. We love Spider-Man. I loved that. I thought that was cool and clever, but I also love how they made, like, remarks to it in the moment where, like, they do get there. The villains, and Electro has the, you know, the Arca reactor on, and he tells Peter, hey, how you like the new-new? I love that, and he's like, yo, give me the box, Peter, and I'll let you live. Or whatever, and he, and I love it. He's like, "Don't make me, don't make me a murderer, Pete." And, and I love how like Peter ends up swinging. They both put their masks on, and they're and I love how like um Andrew Spider Man gets the uh, attention of Max, saying Maxi, and, and starts swinging around. And I just love that. And I love how like just I I love how they were all doing stuff, and they were like not coordinated at first. I loved that, and then the moment where like they do start talking to each other, he's like, "What the hell is happening out there? You guys are just screaming out numbers and stuff like that." And he's like. He's like, hey, guys, listen to Peter One or whatever. And, he's, and then they're looking, and Toby, and, and, Toby and Andrew are looking at each other like, what? Well, I thought I was Peter One or something like that. Because it, it's just funny that they're, they're reminiscing on how people rank them and stuff like that. So I, I thought that was hilarious. So, and then he's like, okay, he's like, uh, he's like, you know, not to brag. Uh, uh, he's like, I'm Peter, listen to Peter One, not to brag, but I was a part of Avengers. Like, T Toby and Spider-Man's like, dude, you were a part of the Avengers? What is that? Uh, I just love that. He's like, dude, he, and, and Tom Spider-Man's like, you don't, have, you don't have the Avengers on the Earth? And then Andrew's like, what is that, a band? Are you in a band? And he's like, you know, no, the Avengers are, Avengers are Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And then Toby's like, how is this helping? I loved that. And they're like, okay, so Peter 1, Peter 2, and then t Andrew's like, Peter 3. And he's like, okay, so let's just attack one at a time. Okay, you got it. Okay, so let's go after Sam in first. And he's like, yes, let's take him off the leaderboard. And he's like, okay, got it, guys, let's go do this. And they end up running in a line and end up jumping off together and they play the uh, Spider-Man theme song. That dun, 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 dun. You know what I mean? I don't want to go in anymore because I don't want to get copyrighted. But you get what I'm saying. There was a cool sequence. They're all swinging around. They're using one another webs to bounce each other, throw each other and do stuff. And they get that cool pan shot where they're up in front into the sky. And they end up doing the landing poses, which they did edit them out when, you know, you know Tom lands at the in, in, that tra in the trailer on the Statue of Liberty. And they end up jumping. And then we do see that one edit out when we see, you know, uh, you know, uh, lizard's head turn that's actually andrew kicking him and then we see of course you know uh toby up top um, you know what I mean? Going again, I think going after Sandman, and then we see, uh, you know, um, you know, Tom going after Electro. So that was a cool sequence going down. They're all fighting one another, doing everything. They end up going after Sandman. You know, you know, Andrew gets tied down by Lizard. No one can get, you know. And then there's a point where like Toby Spider Man is getting like, you know, up on top of the crown, and he ends up getting, you know, a whole bunch of sand. He's getting like, you know, drowned in sands. And then of course I love the moment where like. 
Andrew grabs the thing, throws it to Tom. Tom grabs it, throws it to Toby. Toby grabs and clicks the thing, and it makes cures Sandman. But it's the same shots that we got from it's from Spider-Man 3. Those are like the same VFX shots that they got, the same facial expressions that we got from, you know, from, um, you know, um, from, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Flint. That was the same, you know, it's like the same shots, but instead of they did the, instead of they, they did like a reverse, um, you know, instead of them like, you know, turning into mud, they made them turn just to normal. They did like a reverse thing, but those are the same shots. I noticed that the third time I watched it, I was like, oh my god, those are the same shots, they just took them from Spider-Man 3, and it's like the same shots when they also cure, uh, you know, um, Lizard, and I was like, oh my god, these are like the same shots from Amazing Spider-Man 1, and I'm like, I was like, but they just change them up a little bit, I'm like, that's a little weird, why did they do it like that, why didn't they just get the people back, it may have been scheduling problems, um, it wasn't too noticeable, so I think it'll be fine, it was passable, um, it was just very weird how they did that, I was like, that's a little weird, um, but it was cool. It, it made sense why they would do that because, I mean, time wouldn't pass for them. This would be the first time they're changing back. So it did make sense because, again, they, they left as right when they became who they became at the point, like, I guess at the point of their, their death origins or right or at the point of where they were at their peak moments, they left. Their universes came now. So it would make sense. That I guess that moment would be the same moment or whatever. So I was like, this is passable. I like this. This is cool. Because those are minor nitpicks. Or, like, they're, they're, they're so minor, it does not affect how I feel about this movie. I think this movie is A1, 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Go see this movie. You haven't already seen it already, which... I bet you everybody has seen it so far already, but I mean, I know some people that haven't seen it yet that do want to see it. So, I mean, I feel like people don't need to say go see this because people are going to go want to go see this because, again, this is the most hyped movie of all time. Uh, you know, up, again, also, like, right next to Endgame and Infinity War, which this beat the Infinity War record. Um, this take this they this took off the Infinity War record and took Infinity War's place. So of course we have you know Rise of Skywalker is the next one, which they still get past Rise of Skywalker, and then of course Endgame's at the top, baby. So I don't know when when it be cool if this beat Endgame records if it, when because again this is only Saturday. It it could possibly be Endgame's records. I don't I don't know I don't know, but it is crazy though what's going on, guys. So um. But honestly, I don't think it will be End Games Records, but it would be cool if it did, though. It would be insane. It'd be the first movie ever probably do that. Especially, this this was the first ever Spider-Man movie that got the highest rating on Rot Rotten Tomatoes, which, again, I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes. I have a problem with Rotten Tomatoes. I said on my Instagram, on my post, this is probably the first time I agree with Rotten Tomatoes on the Spider-Man No Way Home movie deserves 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I said this might be the only time I'm going to be agreeing with Rotten Tomatoes because I just don't like Rotten Tomatoes, but... Um, just seeing the moment where he's like clean, you know, when, you know, uh, when, you know, Toby, you know, is, uh, you know, saving, you know, uh, you know, Flint and he, the, the music is playing the Sam Raimi music. And then the moment where, you know, it's, you know, Tom Spider-Man saves, you know, uh, you know, lizard. And then we see a moment, of course, where, you know, we, when, uh, they're, they, you know, they're trying to take out Electro, but Electro has, of course, you know, you know, starts arc reactor and he ends up shocking them, ends up trapped, like, doing the same thing to Andrew that he did in Amazing Spider-Man 2 when he's, like, holding him there, and he has the, the device that's gonna, you know, f cure him, and at this point, you know, Doc Ock comes in, Otto ends up grabbing Toby, ends up grabbing Andrew, and I love how, like, uh, you know, Max is like, I got this, I could do this myself, and then that's why he just is trying to say, oh, I got them, they're mine, but I love it because he ends up grabbing Max, ends up taking the arc reactor out, and ends up putting the one that's gonna take all of his electricity out and just make him normal, and I love the moment when he does, and ends up being normal, and then Andrew goes over saying, Max, Max, he's like, okay, I'm, a, I'm okay, kid. I, I'm I'm all juiced out, and he's like, you know, and I love it because he's like, you know, you know, it's now I've seen your pace. You're a really good looking dude, and it's playing the Amazing Spider-Man music, and he's like, you know, you're just a kid or whatever, you know what I mean? And uh, he's like, you know, you're cool. I'm a nobody. You made your own costume. You you, you live in Queens. You know what I mean? I just thought you were black. And he's like, and I love how Andrew's like, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. And he's like, no, don't be. There has to be a black Spider-Man out there somewhere. You know there is. I can't wait. I can't wait. I know they're building up to Miles. I can't wait. I love Miles Morales. Oh my God! When you get to the MCU, I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip. And that, there's a chance he could be showing up in the college years of um of Tom Spider-Man movies. That'd be cool. Um, because I do think there's a chance it could possibly end after the third Spider-Man movie of the new trilogy. I think they're gonna be going to to Miles Morales. I think. I think that's what they're gonna try to do. Um, I think the first movie or first two movies will be. Peter in college, or by the, by the end of the second movie, I think he'll graduate, um, like, it'll be like the, like, it'll be, and, and I think the next movie will be him growing up or whatever, and then taking on Miles, maybe, it'll be the end credit, of the second one of the new trilogy will be a Miles, 
Easter egg, and he'll be training Miles in, like, the third film, and then maybe he'll die. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to be doing with Tom's, you know, Peter Parker, or where his, his future is as Spider-Man. But I do love how Tom Holland said he, he's willing to be Spider-Man as long as people want him. And I do love that about Tom Holland, is that he really loves his character. He really notices how much the character has changed his life and he is just done strides in his acting career he's the most sought after you know actor everybody wants him but the dude deserves a break literally the man has been non-stop acting and he deserves a break so tom I, you're probably not going to see this video bro but you have killed this role you have you you have killed it as spider-man you have killed it as peter parker you have killed it in the acting game bro you you deserve a break you deserve to take a vacation decide what you want to do with your life um, and then come back and hopefully be our Spider-Man again for the next trilogy of movies, bro. Um, but I loved this movie so much. And to see also the moment where like when, you know, Otto gets a moment with Toby and he, and he says to, you know, um, you know, he says, um, uh, he says, oh, because, you know, at this point, you know, Otto has the, you know, the uh, arc reactor says the, the power of the sun. And then, of course, Toby comes in and says, at the palm of my hand. And he sees Toby and he's like, yo, Peter, how are you, boy? He's like, you've grown. And he's like, you know, like, how are you? And he's like, um, you know, I'm you know, still trying to, you know, change the world. And it was just such a nice moment to see them so happy and so wanting to see one another. And and that's how Toby Spider-Man wishes how things could have went down. Um, with all these villains and stuff like that, he was just wanted to help and things didn't go his way. Um, he never wanted to kill anybody, same as Andrew never wanted to kill Electro, it just happened, he wanted to save him and things just happened. Um, so this was like a redemption arc and I love also because at this point, here comes Green Goblin. They've cured everybody, but here comes Green Goblin and next he keeps, he throws the, uh, the, the pumpkin bombs and stuff or actually he throws like those razor blade things and I love how I don't know if anybody caught this, but it's a, it's a, again, it's a callback to the moment, you know, that moment where, like, Toby Spider-Man and Spider-Man 1 flips in the, when the building, you know, in the building that's on fire, he ends up going in there, and, you know, in, um, and, you know, Green Goblin's pretending to be, in, like, a, a lady that needs help, and then when he ends up throwing, um, the, the, the razor things, and he says, wrong answer, and he ends up throwing them, and then I love how, like, you remember when Toby's like, I hate those things, and he ends up doing the flip like that, that's the same motion that Tom did in that sequence, I don't know if anybody caught that, but at this point, um, Doctor Strange is back, and he's trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, get the, he ends up getting the thing back, because Doc Ock ends up helping, because he ends up taking the box that's going to send them all back, because he doesn't want to go back. So, at this point, Doc Ock grabs his glider, and then there comes Strange get, with a sling ring, grabs it with his little whip thing, pulls it back, and then here comes, uh, you know, Green Goblin slices one of the arms off, and ends up putting one of the pumpkin bombs in the box. So when he tries doing the spell, it'll blow up, and we do see that, because it zooms in on Toby, Peter, and Andrew. They're getting the Spidey sense going, and when so switching around to go so he can hit the button, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, Strange, and the, the pumpkin bomb is there, and it explodes, and it makes cracks in reality, in, and leading into different multiverses and stuff, because the because the spell got out, and since the spell got out, it's continuing to bring all these other trying to bring these other villains in that people that know who Peter Parker or Spider Man. It's trying to bring all these other villains in, and we see Easter eggs to um to Craven the Hunter. We see Easter eggs to you know a Scorpion. We see Easter eggs to Rhino and all these other different Spider Man villains up top. So I thought that was very clever and cool that we see shadows of possible villains to be coming in the future of Spider Man because we already know we're getting a Craven movie. I don't know if it's going to be set in the world of like the MCU Spider Man to Toby um, Tom's universe. I don't know, but it would be cool if like that was a hint towards it or something. Or even if it is in a different universe, the Multiverse of Madness is coming. So maybe that that Craven that we saw is. Aaron Taylor Johnson's Craven, Craven and can come over. I don't know, but that was very cool to see all those little Easter egg hints. And then we see the moment where, like, um, well, that's happening. He, you know, uh, you know, it's cool because as that's happening, everything that's going on, there's a moment where, you know, the destruction of everything happening and the bomb going off, the, the shield ends up breaking, ends up sliding down. And then that's what it knocks, you know, MJ off the platform. And here comes Tom, like, jumping off trying to get to her ends up getting hit by the glider the glider takes her away, takes him away from saving her and that's when andrew says no jumps down and saves her and he literally starts like tearing up and he wishes that that's what he could have done for gwen and and he kind of he did that for you know what i mean he did it but for you know his alternate version of mj i loved that it was a good foreshadowing of i saved i saved a version of my Gwen Stacy, I saved his 
Gwen Stacy. I loved that. I just loved how he was able to get there in time. And he needed that. He needed that. He held you because that's what we saw previously. He's like, I, 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 I hold that. I still hate myself for that. I couldn't get to where he's, we, we hear him say that. And it was a sigh of relief when he's like, I got you. I got you. And, and I love when he's like, you know, he's like, he says, are you okay? And I love how like MJ's like, are you okay? And it was just, it was a good moment. I loved that moment. And, um, Seeing the moment also where, like, you know, he we see Peter grab the pumpkin bomb, you know, he's, like, beating it, beating it, trying to pull it out, click it, and, and, and put it where the glider is so the glider will go down, and they end up, like, crashing on the, 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 the shield that's on the ground, and there was a cool fight scene that broke out between Green Goblin and between, you know, Tom's Peter Parker, and he was pulling no punches. He even said to Peter... Like, oh, you know what I mean? Are you, you know, like, he's like, oh, you want to, you know, I, I'm not going back. And he's like, I don't want you to go back. I just want to save you just so I could kill you or whatever. Like, I, I love that scene when they end up fighting. And I love the part where, like, he webs down, ends up jumping up, and then he, like, makes a big impact on the shield and then, like, it, like, vibrates. It's because it shows how strong Peter is. And he's not pulling any punches. He wants to kill Green Goblin. And he ends up hitting him and hitting him. He ends up grabbing his, like, grabbing his shoulders and making him knee, knees him in the face, ends up grabbing his back, ends up swinging him and slamming him on the, like on his back. Like he is trying to kill Green Goblin. He ends up punching him and punching him and punching him. Ends up doing, he does an uppercut. And then we, and Ned, MJ see him and just see how angry he is. When we see Toby and Andrew, they, they hear what's going on. They're like, oh my God, he's going to kill him. And we see Andrew look at Toby and Toby's like, yeah, I got to stop him. And mind you, at this moment, He's going to grab the glider. I'm like, oh my god, he's going to do the same. He's kind of like doing the same thing that Toby's Toby did to his. He didn't do it to him, but like, but like, it's like, to, like his ver version of Spider Man is going to do it on purpose, where Toby Spider Man did it on accident. And I love how Toby was the one to stop him. And it was very reminiscent of the moment where, like, Green Goblin, remember, he grabbed his glider and tried shoving it. And, you know, tried, you know, stabbing, you know, Peter. And, but Peter had it like that. Remember that, guys? So, like, that was crazy to see that foreshadow of, like, oh, my God. It's, like, reverse. It's, but it's, like, Spider-Man doing it to Spider-Man. But he's trying to save him, saying, please don't do this. And, uh, mind you, at this point, when he's standing in front of Green Goblin, I'm, like, he still has knives. He's going to kill him. Oh, my God, he's going to kill Toby. Spider-Man, please, dear God, let this not be because Tom, Spider-Man's being reckless right now. Please let him not get stabbed he gets stabbed i said oh my god did he just die i was like oh my god I was literally the whole audience gasped we're like the whole audience was like no oh my god please no of, of, of toby spider-man working dying because as we know previously he ends up explaining saying him and mj are together they're great and that was gonna make me literally cry that he would just disappear and he would die and mj wouldn't know what happened to him so i'm just like oh my god please dear god no but then even like i love the moment because when he's like oh you you might be mad. I like I might have you know uh, I might have uh, uh, struck the blow, but you you killed her or whatever. I was like, oh, you little ass. And I love how Andrew throws the antidote. Tom grabs it and stabs him in the neck. You know, goblin and squeezes the antidote in, and that's when he just becomes Osborne. Sees what he's done on the ground to Toby Spider Man, and even says. Peter, what have I done? And I loved that moment. Meaning, he's like, "Oh my God, what have I just done? What have, what, did, what, have I, what did I just do? I didn't mean to do this. What, what did I do?" And that goes to show that Osborne never wanted to do all the things he did. It was the other half that always took over. And I'm just so happy he gets to be himself now. He doesn't have to have another half that ruins things and that hurts people, and he doesn't have to go through being scared of you know of the other half taking over. It's he, you know, I just love how. After all that person done, you know, any other person would have just been like, oh, I'm going to kill this dude, I'm going to kill this dude, but it needed it needed to be another Spider-Man, but they'd be like, please don't do this, you're better than this, please, I know it's hard, I don't want you to make the same mistake I did when it doesn't make it feel better when you kill somebody, I thought it'd make me feel better when I killed my, my uncle's killer, or thought I did, and it didn't help, please don't do this, I loved how he was the one to stop to Tom's Peter from doing it. I loved it because he would understand because he's killed somebody. I loved that. I loved it. It was a great foreshadowing. I, there was a lot of good, great foreshadowing in this movie and, and a lot of good fan service. And I'm so happy this movie executed it. This movie killed it. This movie, again, is a 10 out of 10. I love this movie so, 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 so much. Guys, I can't believe that we finally got this movie. I just can't believe it. And at this point, you know, um, he goes over the, he goes over, you know, it's a strange. Strange is like okay, I don't know what to do. You know, I mean, it's too late or whatever. I I I can't un, I can't undo the spell. Um, like 
he's like, oh, can can you just do like un- do do the spell all over again? He's like, I can't, I can't do that spell or whatever. Um, he's like, what if it, what if people just forgot who's Peter Parker is entirely? Is there any way to fix it? And he's like, yeah, but like that means everybody, and you know that means everybody, and 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 I that everybody that knows and loves you won't know you we, we, we won't know you everybody that knows and loves you we won't we won't remember you meaning that he loves peter he's everybody that knows and loves you we won't remember you and that was so sad as he's strange like that we won't remember you and he's like you know i was like i know everything will be okay you just you do this it needs to be done and it was sad because it's like he's like you know you know he's like um he's like thank he's like okay kid go say your goodbyes you probably should go say your goodbyes and he's like okay thank you sir and he's like don't call me sir it's steven I was like, you know, I mean, yeah, he says, you know, sorry, he's like, you know, Steven. And he's like, Steven, I loved that. But seeing Strange's face, like, I can't believe, I can't, th- this is not fair for this kid. He's like, you could see it in his eyes. He's like, he didn't want, he's like, I can't believe this is going to happen. He's not going to, no one's going to remember him. He's like, if you could see all, on Steven's face, he feels sorry, he feels sad for what Peter, what Peter's going to be going through. No one's going to remember him. He's like, I can't believe this. He's like, you could see it. Um, and he ends up going to MJ saying, you know, guys, um, you guys are going to forget who I am, but I, I pro- I'm going to come for you and I'll explain it to you. And he's like, he's like, MJ's like, what do you mean? And Ned's like, what do you mean? We're going to forget you. I don't, and MJ's like, I don't want to forget you. I don't want to do that. And he's like, and he's like, you know, I'll, I'll come and find you. I promise guys, you know, I, and this needs to happen. And then, and then Ned's like, you know, you know, promise. And I, I cried when, when he was explaining it to them, I was crying. I was bawling. I was crying. I couldn't, I, I literally like my, my mask was soaked. I was like, Oh God. I was like, Oh, why, why this movie? I was like, why? I was like, there needs to be consequences, but why? I was like, uh, and he's like, please, he's like, you promise me, you promise you'll come and find us. And then, and, and, and I love how MJ is like, you know, you know, you know, even if you don't come and find us, you know, I'll, I'll figure it out. Like I, like I did before, I'll figure it out. And then it was just so sad because, you know, she ends up, you know, kissing him and saying, I, you know, I, I love, I, he ends up, she ends up saying, I love you. And he's like, I, and she's like, save it for when you see me next time. And then ends up kissing him. And then he ends up swinging off. And before he swings off, she says, you know, I love you. And then Ned's like, you know, just, it was just so sad to see that he's saying they said goodbye. He said goodbye. And then he gave Strange the nod saying, do it. And then he ended up doing it. And at this point, no one knows. It's like a week after, two weeks after. The Statue of Liberty is still being under, you know, um, you know, construction. But the shield's not there anymore. Um, and again, J. Jonah Jameson's talking about how Spider-Man's a menace, this, this, and that. And he's like, he's like, oh, if, he, if, he, if he was such a hero, he would, he would unmask himself. So no one knows who Spider-Man is. No one knows who Peter Parker is. And things are back to normal in a way, but no one knows who Peter Parker is, and Peter doesn't have any friends, so it's going to be exciting to see where he'll go going forward, because as we all know, he, uh, we thought he was going to go, and go tell them the truth, he ends up going to the donut shop that MJ works at, and he ends up, you know, he ends up walking in, she sees him, or at least we think she sees him, but she sees Ned, and ends up waving at Ned, and he ends up asking for a coffee, ends up saying, oh, are you excited for MIT? And he's like, yeah, I'm really excited or whatever. And, and he ends up getting the coffee. And he ends up trying to say, oh, yeah, I have to pay you. And he ends up looking up at her and sees the bandit on her head. And he ends up saying, are you okay? And it's the f- same foreshadowing to when he asked her earlier after all the fighting, all the fighting was done. He was saying goodbye, saying, are you okay? And she said, yeah, you know, you know she's like, yeah, um, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, 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 I'm fine. And... When, what we all know in this movie, we can see that they're putting on a front because they even said when, you know, no one was accepting their college letters. They're like, oh, she's like, you know what? And she comes up there. I wouldn't change anything for the world, but she could, he, he can tell that's affecting their lives. And then he's like, yeah, I, I'm not, I wouldn't change a thing. And then he ends up, you know, ripping up the letter and earlier in the movie, Ned and stuff and says, oh, actually, he knows that they're putting on a front and it's affecting their lives. He knows it. And in the moment when, you know, he says like, oh, like, are you, are you okay? Does, does it hurt? And then MJ's like, not anymore, and meaning that she was she was essentially lying. It it it, it like meaning that everything that he put them through, he realized it. He's like, oh my god, you know, I you guys are in a safer place. It was a reminder, like if I bring you guys into my inner circle again, you guys will get hurt or you guys could die. I can't do that for my feelings and how I'm feeling. I need to do it for what's best for you guys. And he makes it to the point where he's like, you know, um, nothing. I have, a, I have a nice day. Um, and that was really sad to see him just see her 
or Band-Aid and ask, are you okay? And she said, yeah, you know, it doesn't hurt anymore. Meaning, it doesn't hurt anymore the fact of, like, he sees that. Like, he's, you know, not putting her in danger doesn't hurt. Her being, you know, being not accepted to things and her life being affected just by who he is, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt her anymore. She's not going through any problems. She's just living her normal life. She's excited for college and he doesn't want to ruin anything for her. He doesn't ruin, ruin anything for Ned. Ned's in a great place going out to college and doing things like that. Like, he doesn't want to ruin anything just because of the way he's feeling. And that's interesting because, again, she said, I, like, I'll just figure it out if you don't tell me. And it's like she was almost trying to, like, figure things out. And she sells the Black Dahlia necklace on, which was a cool little hint to that that she still has it. And the fact of, like, the next trilogy of movies, like, they might, I don't know. I mean, also, Ned saying, oh, I promise you I won't, you know, I, I, I won't betray you and become a villain and try to kill you. Who's to say that, you know, he promised it when he knew Peter Parker, but now he doesn't know who Peter Parker is. Who's to say if he'll still keep that promise? Again, it leaves questions open and little, like, hints open to, like, little foreshadowings of you said it then and what could happen later down the line. Oh, like, if you don't tell me, I'll just figure it out, which I, I won't be surprised if, Mich if MJ does figure it out in the new trilogy of movies. And I won't be surprised if, you know, and Ned's saying, oh, I promise I won't kill you, this, this, and that. And he ends up trying to kill Peter. That was, like, I mean, I feel like they're setting up things that we don't know what could happen in this next trilogy and movies. All I know is that we're going to have him in his college years. And I'm super excited to see where that will go. Um, and the way we leave off this movie is him moving into his apartment by himself. It's a crappy apartment, but it's so Spider-Man. He always lives in a crappy apartment. And the person saying, you know, rents on the first of the week, don't be, don't be late. And he's bringing in all the boxes. He's smiling. You know, he uh, has his suit on the bed. He has his police scanner on his phone. Um, he has his windows open. It's winter. It's the, the dead of winter right now. It's winter now. It's snowing. And here I am thinking that, you know, the thing is going off. The mask is on his bed. They, they zoom in on, you know, he's grabbing his mask. They zoom in on a uh, coffee cup that said, like, we're here to serve you. I loved it. Like, it means so, like, we're, like, he's there to serve them. I loved that. And that was a cool little thing right there. We're here to serve you. I, I, I just thought that was cool. And we see the sewing machine. We see this new material that's like a metallic blue. And we see the, the just the fabric thing there. And we see the eye holes and everything. I'm like, oh my god, he made his own costume. And then we see him jump, jumping, you know, swinging, jumping out the window, swinging, doing all these cool things. And he's in his new outfit. He's in his comic accurate costume where it's like a classic looking Spider-Man suit. No gadgetry and everything. I mean, they might still have the retractable eyes. Maybe not. I don't know. But I love how Tom also said, Tom Allen actually said he wishes his suits could rip and be torn. How to uh, the Toby's suits were ripped and torn every time he got into an intense battle, which now this suit can because it was ha it was handmade from a sewing machine. And I loved that. I loved how he finally made his own suit. He's finally in his own apartment and he's on his police scanner. As we all know from like the Spider-Man games and everything in the comic books when Spider-Man always does that like he he always has his phone looking at you know for crime updates and stuff like that this is literally reminding me so much of the game and i love the spider-man game because it's so accurate to spider-man and we're finally getting it in the mcu he's finally spider-man now and i love that new suit i just love that new suit i can't wait to like uh sim cosplay or like you know co-cosplay make that costume because i am buying it i love that metallic blue i love the classic spider again I, I i'm excited to see if we'll get a close-up look at it hopefully we do like someone like will like they'll release a picture saying okay this is the new suit this isn't that i don't know i'd be cool if like if somehow these you know cosplayers end up somehow being able to see like take what footage we saw and made the suit it was just so quickly but i know that i love that suit it looks freaking phenomenal i just love that metallic blue him swinging through new york especially swinging by like where the final battle is going to be going down in hawkeye at the at the ice rink is going to be really awesome i'm wondering if we're going to get any hints to spider-man in the last episode of the hawkeye because again as we all know that spell like we don't know when hawkeye we know it takes place around the same time but we don't know exactly like if they'll run into each other, we really don't know, and I'm very curious to know if we'll see any, 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 uh, any, like, um, background Easter eggs or any background news broadcasts about Spider-Man doing this, Spider-Man doing that, this, this, and that. I wonder if we're going to get that in next week's, this uh, upcoming week's episode of Hawkeye, episode six. This is the finale. If, if we're going to have anything to do with Spider-Man or any Easter eggs or anything of anything, or anything or, or of Spider-Man, this would be the episode to do it, especially since we got Matt, Matt Murdock introduced. That would be really cool if we got something that hints towards Matt Murdock being in the Echo series and where that's going to be going. Or I don't know. All, all I know is I would really love 
for us to get something in Spider-Man because it does take place at the same time around, like, you know, in Hawkeye and this, especially, it was snowing, and it's snowing in Hawkeye and stuff, and he's in the dead in New York, he's by the ice rink, he's by doing all this, so it's kind of weird if we don't get anything with, you know, Spider-Man swinging around his new costume or a picture or something, just on a paper or something, I don't know, I just wish we, I hope we get something of Spider-Man and Hawkeye, but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna hold my breath if we don't because it's, there's so much they have to, like, wrap up to end this season, so I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't get anything but it would be cool if we got something in Spider-Man in the, at the at the finale of Hawkeye um, this upcoming week. But guys, that was the spoiler review for you know Spider-Man No Way Home. Again, I loved this movie so 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 much. Um, again, I would put this number one on my Spider-Man ranking list. Um, I would pretty much keep my rankings how they how it is. I think on you know go check out my my Spider-Man ranking video. Um, you know I made it a couple of months ago. I would still stand by it. I would just put this movie up top above Spider-Verse. I think I think this movie literally by the by the by this much beats Spider-Verse. It's not by much, but like this movie did just enough to beat Spider Verse. Um, but again, that's always it always can be taken over by the next Spider Verse movie. This can uh, the next Spider Verse Spider Verse movie could possibly go on top of this. I don't know. Um, but as of right now, this this movie takes the cake of my one of my, uh, of my favorite Spider Man movie um, of all time. And on automatically, this movie makes Tom Holland's trilogy movies. It makes his Spider Man the best trilogies, the best Spider Man trilogy ever, just by this one movie, because everything needed to happen to get to this moment. So, automatically, this one movie makes his trilogy the best trilogy of the Spider Man movies ever. Automatically. In my personal opinion. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but also, um, this movie showed me his strength and stuff. Really showed me that he. he you know, that he. You know what I mean? Like, it just... That he might be the strongest out of all the other Spider-Man. This movie honestly showed it. Honestly. Um, and it just... I'm just happy we got the science moments. And, and I'm just happy he's Spider-Man now. And I'm so excited to see where things will go. But going towards the end credit of this, you know, we see Venom. Um, this is the end credit of... Uh, this is, like, the continuation of the Venom end credit from Venom Let There Be Carnage. Of, you know, Eddie Brock being and Venom being sent to Tom's universe. Um, and we pretty much get a continuation of that, but he's talking to a guy at the bar about, you know, okay, so let me get something straight. There was an alien here, a purple alien that wanted stones. When they don't want stones, they like eating brains. There was a dude in a flying metal suit that, you know, was a billionaire. And there was a person called the Hulk, and he was big and green, and he was strong. And this isn't that. That's what I'm understanding. And then he's, and then that's when he gets sucked out of nowhere. And then Venom's like, hey, we just got here. And then he leaves a piece of Venom symbiote behind. And that's going to be their version on how Venom got to Earth. I love that. He got it through a multiversal Venom. That there was a piece of Venom that, that there. And it's not going to be... I'm happy because I don't want that weird, silly Venom attaching to Tom Holland's Venom. That would have been stupid. I'm happy that we get... Our, we get to start over with Venom, but and make it the right way in our universe. I like that. We're going to get the right Venom in our universe. And what a perfect time, too, where, like, Peter, we saw Peter's dark side. Um, I would be excited to see a Venom symbiote attached to Tom Holland Spider-Man because when he was angry, he was scary, and I loved that. And it's going to be awesome to see that new, to see how cool the symbiote suit's going to look on Tom's Peter Parker or Tom Spider-Man. It's going to be so sick to see how that's going to look on him and see the way how they're going to make that symbiote suit when they do make it for Tom Spider-Man. It's going to be sick. I can't wait. Um, there's just the possibilities are endless on what they're setting up, and I just loved this movie. Again, guys, uh, you know, this was my spoiler review for Spider-Man No Way Home. I give this movie a 10 out of 10. Uh, guys, if you haven't seen this movie, go out and go see it. Go check out this movie. Um, you guys are going to love this movie. It lives up to the hype. Um, it totally de de it totally deserves the 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It got like I think a 99% on score on the audience score rating, if not more. Um, this movie is breaking records again. Already beat the Infinity War record of you know of you know of the of uh, the most viewed stuff of that of of, of, the, of making the most money. I guess um, it already took the place of Infinity War. I mean, it still has some work to do to get to Endgame, but I mean, there's a could be a chance. I don't think it will, but I do think it could possibly beat Rise of Skywalker. Walker. I think it's going to take the helm at some point. This movie is definitely going to be number one for quite some time in the box office, in my opinion. Um... I'm probably going to see this movie one more time, maybe in the in, the, in the, a couple of weeks to come. I'm definitely going to get this movie on 4K, uh, you know, when it comes out, 4K Steelbook, because I'm getting 4K TV this Christmas. Um, I got some 4K DVDs. I picked up the, um, you know, for on um, Black Friday, so I can't wait to watch some of them. Um, but I can't wait to get this movie on 4K. It's going to be awesome. Um, it would be cool if they put an IMAX ratio on the 4K disc, or I hope that Sony can make an agreement with Disney and get the Spider-Man movies, um, the Tom Spider-Man movies on. Um, 
Disney Plus, so that way when No Way Home does come out, it could be an IMAX ratio on Disney Plus. I really hope they will make update their agreement so we can get an IMAX version on Disney Plus and we can watch the Spider Man movies on Disney Plus. I really do hope so. I mean, it's weird that they don't already have that, but it is what it is. I just hope they'll do that for the fans because that's what we want to see this movie in IMAX. Um, I do think that should they should add an IMAX ratio on the DVDs, at least on the 4K. That'd be cool. Um, hopefully they do that later down the line. I hope they do that on some of the DVDs because it's kind of a shame that they're not in IMAX when you buy DVDs. They're just in normal standard screen uh, resolution. So. It's, I hope they put them in IMAX going forward some, you know, at least I'm on the disc, um, uh, you know, uh, a mode where you can change it to IMAX, that'd be sick. But guys, that was the video. Again, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, like this video. I would love to have you guys here, part of this family on this channel. While they're spreading love, positivity, and motivation, right now we're literally on our way to hitting 500 sub subscribers. We're making moves, we're making strides. This family's growing each and every day, guys. And I'm so happy um, for what this channel has achieved. Uh, we Again, we are, we are achieving greatness. Uh, we're making moves. Again, we're making strides. And this family is growing each and every day. I'm super, super grateful for it. And I love it, guys, when you guys you know spread love and positivity and support down in the comments below. I love talking to you guys. It's the best part of my day. I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments below uh, about this movie. Because, again, uh, you know, a lot of crazy, th crazy things happen. I just can't wait to communicate with you guys and, talk and, and ask you guys what was your favorite part of the movie. What are you guys most excited to see going forward in the Spider-Man trilogy? And, yeah, guys, that was a video. I hope everybody has a good again. Don't forget to check out my spider-man movie ranking again It's in the spider-man playlist. So go check that out and also don't forget to check out um my ticket buying experience too. That was a funny video. Go check out that video and just go. Uh, yeah, hopefully you join the family. But guys, that was the video. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.